Hello and welcome to Autoinform. In this edition of Frank's Toolbox, we're going to look at diesel fuel analysis. It's been a problem that we've encountered many, many times. I'm sure that everyone involved with diesel repairs has come across the same problem. How do we know what's in the fuel? Why do we need to know what's in the fuel? Well, let, let's take a, a step back and think about what a diagnostic process actually involves. Finding the fault, yes, replacing the the part rectifying the situation absolutely but we have to be sure we've actually cured the cause and not dealt with the symptoms one of the biggest symptoms of diesel systems failure is of course the fuel cross-contamination whether with petrol or other agents has always been an issue I'm increasingly hearing from many people on the training courses that we run all over the country that many manufacturers now will point blank refuse any warranty claims whatsoever unless a sample of the fuel is supplied and that fuel is analysed. There's many ways you can analyse it and I have every respect there's some specialists and experts out there who are my personal friends who can smell it, feel it, taste it, literally, and they will know if it's contaminated. I don't have those skills. I've been looking for a way of being sure what concentration of elements are in the fuel and whether that's actually contributed to the failure of the system. Quite recently, we came across this uh, particular fuel analyzer, which I'm going to demonstrate uh, in this presentation. I've taken a sample of diesel fuel. Uh, we've bought it, I believe, from a local supermarket. I have no idea uh, what quality of fuel it is. Uh, it is not a premium fuel, um, so it's, it's a, um, I, I guess, a middle of the road multi blend diesel fuel uh, at, at a reasonable budget price. Going back to this business of warranty, I'm increasingly hearing people like John Deere was one of the people that was mentioned by name, I believe will not entertain warranty claims whatsoever if there's more than half a percent of biofuel in, in the diesel fuel. So there, there are some really serious issues. So I'm suggesting from a diagnostic point of view, testing the fuel at a very early stage in the process of, of, of diagnosis is perhaps one of the most important issues we should consider. If you get a vehicle back with a warranty claim whereby you've fitted parts and you've fitted a quality component, they've been fitted technically correct to a high standard, why not carry out a fuel analysis? It's possible that the fuel has damaged those new components. Whether that fuel was added after the repair is, is an issue that can be discussed later. So let's take a look at how we then analyse this sample of diesel fuel. This particular kit is supplied uh, through Delphi. It's an electronic analyzer. And what it actually does is analyze the fuel into a group where it will identify the properties of that fuel by a group. I'm going to be guided by this information sheet because we're going to sample this fuel and subject to the results of this sample, we can take a look at what that fuel consists of. Let's get rid of this carry case. First of all, it's absolutely essential that the sample nozzle is spotlessly clean. Warm soapy water, uh, don't submerge the tool of course, but submerge the probe by all means. Wipe it clean and dry. It has been washed uh, recently, so it is clean, and it's important that between every sample you take, it is clean. We go through a calibration process. So the first stage is to calibrate the tool. Now to achieve that, we push that calibration button like so, and you will see from that process it goes through a self-calibration. Calibration is complete. Exit. And the measurement key is the one on the far right hand side. And the next important consideration is that the sample nozzle is completely submerged up and beyond those slots. It comes supplied with a set of beakers and this is a beaker uh, with which we can stand the tool. So I need to stand the tool carefully in the diesel. I'm going to support it and I'm going to push the measurement 
button. Now I need to move around just to take a look at the, the scale. And it's counting down from 20. It's actually taking a sample now as we speak. And that's going to then ask me to remove it from the fuel. There we are. Remove from the fuel. And it now goes through a 60 second countdown while it forms an evaluation. The table we have is up group of up to 19, including some instrumentation uh, error uh, codes, but things like the amount of impurities, potentially petrol. It can't actually tell us what it is, but it can identify what chemical group of agents the contaminants are responsible from. Um, impurities, potentially vegetable oil, reading may be affected. Large amount of impurities, possibly vegetable oil. Liquid is probably not diesel or biodiesel. So it, it, it identifies quite clearly uh, what area of uh, problems we may have. This is 2.3% biodiesel. I started quite a low, con uh, well, I say low. That would not meet John Deere's um, specification. So had this fuel been removed from one of their tractors with a warranty claim for those injectors or pump, it would be thrown out. So um, I think it's a valuable tool. I think it's a valuable tool in terms of diagnostic process. I think it's an incredibly valuable tool with regard to warranty. I mean, we're very keen. We, we, we source very high value, very high quality products, and we build them into every repair we do. But then very much, we're at the mercy of the vehicle operator. And obviously, there is a lot of fuel contamination and cross-fueling. This is a tool that will 100% guarantee that we can identify that. Uh, and that's a tool that we shall be using as part of our preliminary uh, investigation uh, with uh, diesel system failure. And that's the result, 2.3 biodiesel. So it is diesel, 2.3. I haven't done any fuel testing. It's now something I'm going to do. I mean, I personally, my own private vehicle, run very high quality fuels, either V-Power or, or um, um, the Ultima BP equivalent. I'd be very interested to see what the difference is in those fuels when we analyse them. So that concludes this edition of Frank's Toolbox. I hope you realise just how valuable some of this technology is that now being made available to us. And I look forward to seeing you in the next edition.